Welcome to The Book Show, a celebration of reading and writers. I'm Joe Donahue. Acclaimed author Patricia Engel gives voice to five family members in her new novel, Infinite Country, as they navigate the particulars of their respective circumstances. And all the while, the metronome ticks. In this novel, immigration is an ongoing process, a constant flow of people across borders. The central family has one foot in Colombia and one in the United States. The new novel is Infinite Country, and it is a great pleasure to welcome Patricia Engel to this week's book show. Thank you. I'm happy to speak with you today. What brought you to the subject initially? Well, Infinite Country is my fourth book, and all of my books have explored immigration and diaspora in different ways. My first three books really focused on the individual experience of a particular character. And with Infinite Country, I wanted to look at the collective experience of a family undergoing the immediate process of immigration, but also in a way that would allow you to see their interior experiences and uh, the private experience of each of those five family members as they relate to one another. What is fascinating about this novel is the backstory that you give these characters. You tell us about this, and the way it unfolds is beautiful. What was that like to write that in the sense of the way that it unfolds and knowing when to tell us what? The story went through many drafts, um, and it was longer at one point. What I wanted to do was make it feel as urgent and essential as possible, the way that sometimes when you meet somebody and they tell you a story that means something to them, that's important to them, they don't they don't waste time. Every word that comes out of their mouth matters and counts. So that was really important for me to kind of replicate that type of human experience in an encounter where you're being told um, an, an intimate story of a family. And of course, family stories very often feel Epic. So it was a bit of managing all those things together and see how I could distill it to feel immediate and true. Let us begin with Italia because she is the first character we meet in the novel. She is at a correctional facility for adolescent girls in Colombia. Tell us a little bit about Talia and the streak in her that, that gets her to that place and ultimately brings her through the rest of the novel. The first thing you need to know about Dalia, which you learn very quickly, is that she was born in the United States and sent back as a baby to Colombia to be cared for by her grandmother and her father, who has been deported. So you're meeting a family already split in half. Her mother and two siblings are in the United States. And Dalia is one way, one week away from being reunited with her family. She, so you meet her when she's in a reform school type of facility for youth offenders, uh, because she's committed a crime, there's no doubt about her guilt, though some readers might read her act differently, maybe think it was justified or understand it in a way um, that is more complex from what the law said. So she's in a hurry to get back to Bogota, where the plane ticket awaits her to be reunited with her mom and her brother and sister. So there's the immediate urgency there. But it's really, you see, Talia on a quest of her own, on a migratory quest of her own. She has to traverse a significant portion of the country in order to leave the country to be reunited with her family. It is early in the year, but I think this is going to stand as one of the greatest opening lines of a novel it was her idea to tie up the nun. That's a great first line. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so she's in this facility, and then it's it's to get out of that facility, and then to to go home, and and then figuring out where that is, right? And and that is also fascinating because we. We learn, as you just said, of what you need to know about her. We learn of the split. She is born in America, and and yet she has her father waiting for her and ultimately her mother wondering where she is as well. Yeah, and what you learn is that that's a very common situation. The, the family in Infinite Country is very typical of a, a family where family members are living in different countries and navigating that distance and time and space and uncertainty as the result of ever-changing immigration laws and trying to remain a family despite all that. So you see how these ideas of where you were born and where you were living or where you returned to 
um, they're interrogated and questioned and the meaning of country and citizenry and what it means to be a part of a family is also examined too. That idea of being a member of the family, I believe it's in the 19th chapter where you say, you already know me, I'm the author of these pages. That comes late in the <clears throat> novel, almost two thirds in. And so we are we are hearing different voices and then it is established who is telling us this story. Talk a little bit about the creation of that idea. Well, you find out at that point, and I don't think I'm giving anything away in saying so, that the novel is in the hands of the eldest child, Karina. She's um, Galia's sister, and she, on the other hand, was born in Colombia and brought to the United States as a baby and has lived her entire life in the United States. And as a result of her parents overstaying their visas, she is undocumented. So she cannot leave the United States without really sacrificing everything. Um, so she's in a very different position as her sister and even as her brother and her parents. And this is this is really the story of this family. They all have very different experiences as a result of that collective experience. But Karina is sort of the family truth teller. She's the family storyteller. She's the family archivist. She's the one that's collecting everybody's stories. So you find out that everything that you're learning about this family has come through her, that she's assembling their stories story in the way that every family assembles their story. And uh, I do think that in every family, there is somebody like that, who's kind of the family witness, the maybe more objective one, the one that everybody will go to, to be sort of the memory, the collective memory of the family. And they're the person that as time um, is the, are the ones who can really um, repeat the stories to subsequent generations. The name of the new novel is Infinite Country, and it is by Patricia Engel, published by Avid Reader Press. The depiction of the parents, of the mother and father, is beautiful because they are split, and yet they they do love each other, and they and that is very hard to go through, especially when you are separated, and they're trying to get back yet that love shows through, doesn't it? Yeah, and they pass through many years. You know, this is set over a period of 15 years of right. their separation where they don't know what's going to happen, and the reader certainly does not know either. Um, whether they are reunited, whether they even want to be reunited is sometimes in question, as is typical. That idea of always not knowing, though, it is is such a through line to the novel. And I guess you could tag on to that fear, the fear of of being caught. Talia has that fear of of leaving the institution. There's the the fear of of being in the United States illegally. There's the fear of leaving Colombia and going to the United States. That constant fear that is that arches throughout the entire novel. Yeah, it's um, uncertainty and and confusion, right? Because uh, sometimes laws seem to be working in your favor and the next day they might be working against you and it changes year to year, administration to administration and people have to live with that and also with the way that public perception has changed radically over the years with regard to foreigners. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to set Infinite Country over a long period. It follows this family over a period of 20 or so years, beginning in the late 1990s. And you can really see in a pretty direct way how specific events changed the cultural atmosphere um, in the United States with regard to uh, foreigners and immigration as a result of the events mm. around 9-11, the supposed war on terror, the creation of the Department of Homeland Security, and how the framing of foreigners as intruders, as dangerous, as invaders, really escalated in a very dramatic way. Yes, certainly an escalation, and yet always kind of at the at the base, right? That there there is this otherness to it and and how difficult it is. There's never really in 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 this novel and and in in reality a golden age, is there? Not in the period of covered it in this novel. 
it really just focuses on the immediate orbit of this family. They're very right. concerned with their day to day. A lot of the misconceptions that people have about families who are in the process of emigrating, and they think that it's full, full of certainty. Once you arrive, you're happy to be here and you don't really look back. In fact, in my experience, it's quite different. It's full of nuance. It's full of very complicated and complex and often contradictory emotions. Um, regret, doubt, shame, profound homesickness, wondering if you made the right choices, wondering if you should just pack up and go home, and constantly weighing the risks and the rewards in both places. And it becomes even more difficult to deal with when you have loved ones on both sides. And you are missing things. And I think now, perhaps in this year of pandemic, some people are getting a sense of that. Some people who have not been able to spend time with their families as a result of the pandemic, people who've missed out on holidays, people who've not been able to accompany their loved ones in their time of difficulty or in the hospital, or have even not been able to celebrate the, um, the weddings or marriages, happy moments, or even... Um, mourn the deaths of their loved ones as a result of the separation that we here in the United States are feeling now. And this is something that a lot of immigrant families feel year after year after year after year. When it comes to your story and being from Colombia and then, of course, now in the United States, how much of it is what you have had to go through, too, in addition to what so many families, as you mentioned earlier, are going through every day. Well, I was born in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm a dual citizen, and I'm also a fiction writer. <laughs> and this is my fourth <laughs> book. And with every single book that I write, everyone asks me if it's autobiographical, which I guess means that my stories are believable enough for people to think that, but also how many lives can one person possibly have? Um, so the story of the family in infinite country is their story. And my family has our own story, which is different. Um, I write fiction and I'm inspired by life as I know it. I am the daughter of immigrants and I've always lived among immigrants. For me, they're my heroes. They're my role models and the people I most look up to in the world. Um, so that's a source of inspiration for me as is my parents' homeland of Colombia and also my own existence um, in diaspora, navigating multiple, multiple identities. Um, I have known many, many people very close to me, touched by exactly the same challenges as the family in infinite country. And um, it, that's what moves me to write this story, even though this is a story that I've known all my life. I've, I've, this is not a new story. Some people think this is a story of this moment. In fact, it's a very old story. And anybody who has this sort of experience would tell you that. Um, there's nothing new here. So that's what interested me in writing the story. But I write fiction because, because it's not me. <laughs> that's what's interesting to me about it. <laughs> I mentioned when when it's revealed of the elder sister telling us this this tale and and saying that she hates the term undocumented and implies people like my mother and me don't exist without a paper trail. Don't tell me I'm undocumented when my name is tattooed on my father's arm. There is a there's a visceral anger there too that exists, and I I found that completely understandable as as well as interesting yeah um one of the things that 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 character is sort of um, unpacking is that term of undocumented and you know the english language is a beautiful language that i love to write in but like any language it falls short in a lot of ways for describing realities of the human experience and we've come to rely on this single term to encapsulate which is really a plethora of situations and statuses when in fact most people who are defined as undocumented actually have a lot of documentation they might be in the process of petitioning or awaiting an adjustment in their status or they might have you know uh, overstayed or something so to be undocumented sort of implies this, um, you know, void or it, it has, you know, it, it sort of, it, it speaks to something that is not always accurate. And I think that in being as precise as possible is when you can really understand the, the human's um, 
who are having those experiences specifically, instead of just applying a blanket term to all of them. Let us talk for a moment about the mother and father in this novel, and we'll begin with Elena, who is living in the United States for for much of this novel. Tell us a little bit about her. Elena was raised by her mother um, in Bogota. Her mother runs a laundry shop out of the first floor of her home. And she's never thought about living abroad until she meets Mauro, who has had a more difficult childhood, which has sort of pushed him to have a more adventurous spirit about wanting to try his luck in another country. So she comes rather reluctantly to the United States and they come on tourist visas. They don't come with the intention of being immigrants. Um, when they are in the United States in Houston, she finds out that she's pregnant with her, their second child. So they decide to stay, but it's really a temporary decision as is often the case. Very often uh, people find themselves to be immigrants somewhat accidentally or circumstantially. It just sort of happens as a series of prolonged short-term decisions. But she ends up being the parent who stays in the United States after Mauro is deported. And she finds herself tasked with caring for their three children alone, which is why she has to make the very difficult decision of sending her baby, Talia, back to Colombia to be mm. raised by her mother and Mauro. So you get to see Elena really becoming not only the breadwinner, but the leading force of the family the strength of the family as both the nurturer, as the caretaker, as the provider, and all the pressures that that places on her. And Mauro, as you said, is, is had a difficult upbringing, but he is, he is fighting many demons and in some cases wins those battles. Not that they don't come back, but he, he is driven on that idea of of trying to bring everything together. Yes, you are right. And it takes him some time, right? As, as happens in life sometimes. Sometimes we don't figure everything out right away and we have our ups and downs, as is the case with Mauro, whose intentions are always good. But as happens with trauma and intergenerational trauma, sometimes things get a little tricky and slippery. So it does take him a while to find his footing as both um, a parent and a partner. You just said a word and a term that I, I hadn't thought of, but it, it's absolutely true. And, and, and it sort of unlocks a key, I guess, to the entire novel of, of this is a traumatic experience. Unfortunately, it is an a, a all too normal experience, but it is traumatic. Immigration is a profound trauma. And it's so normal that sometimes we forget that. It's also completely normal and natural mm. to the human animal. The human species has ensured its survival by its ability to move and to migrate, seeking better resources in order to provide for itself and for its offspring. Uh, it's a, a completely normal thing. And it's only because humankind has also been the species to erect borders that we have forgotten that. Um, mm. But... It's also um, it's also something that most people, especially in the United States, and almost everybody in the United States is the descendant of somebody who was the person who made that migratory choice, or by choice or by force, who was the person who left the homeland in order to end up here. Right. A lot of people are so far removed from that experience and that process that they've forgotten that completely, and they don't identify at all with people who are in the active process of immigrating. But it's really something that everybody, except indigenous peoples in this country, has been touched by in one way or another. Um, that doesn't remove the fact that there is trauma involved with it. And sometimes it's so far buried into our DNA that we don't remember that. And it's even more impacted if we come from a colonized nation. And that's embedded in there, too. Several of the characters are asking the the really good question of okay, is is the United States worth it to, to go to? Is it all that different from what we're fleeing from? Which is fascinating. 
Uh, yeah, the United States is very good at believing its own uh, story about how amazing it is here. And it is amazing. You know, it's a wonderful country, but that doesn't mean that it's perfect. And uh, in acknowledging its flaws doesn't mean that you love it any less. Um, the fact that a country may offer more opportunities also doesn't make you love your homeland less, right? Or, or turn your back on it. Uh, just like, you know, a lot of people will live with their parents until they, you know, maybe go to college or something like that. Just because you leave doesn't mean you love your parents any less, right? Or your child at home any less. Right. So a departure doesn't really mean anything beyond movement in a lot of ways. Um, and in my experience traveling, you know, I've been to something like 50 countries. A lot of people are terrified by the idea of coming to the United States because of the dangers that exist here. And that's something that people who come to this country have to reconcile too. There's also great love for Colombia, for the, the beauty of, of the specialness of, of that place. And the, the driver is more family and that idea that home is where everyone is together. That's a question that the novel asks, and I'm not sure that it answers it. And I think that that's something for readers to answer for themselves. What what does that really mean? Is home a geographic matter? Is love a geographic matter? Is family determined by love or by proximity? These are all things that, that people have to determine for themselves. Again, I think this year of pandemic and separation has made people think about that in new ways. If being separated from your loved ones uh, diminishes your love or your closeness in any way. Talk about the challenges for you in, in writing this novel. How is it, it different and, and what challenges, unique challenges, did it pose in its construction? Well, as I mentioned, I gave myself the task of trying to make it as uh, slim and refined as possible. Uh, I wanted it to feel both epic and expansive and intimate and private and personal, like a, a, a private revelation, you know, a secret being told. So just navigating that space, um, how to contain a large story over 20 years that belongs to five different characters in a way that felt like you were sitting down with this person and they were telling you this story in one big breath. That's how I wanted it to feel. Mm. And uh, yeah, it, it, it took some time to work out how to do that. I love that idea of one big breath because that's it's certainly the way it comes out. Is I can't wait to tell you this. This is what happened. And it's, it is. It's, it's mm -hmm. a, there's an urgency there. When you look at these characters and you think of the creation of this all too real world that they're in and the situation that they're in, does it allow you an opportunity and, and yes, fiction, but does it allow you an opportunity to explore issues for yourself that you ponder and, and wonder about? Yeah, I love to work out my ideas in my fiction. I sometimes arrive at conclusions that I didn't expect. And the best thing is when my own characters surprise me and dictate themselves who and how they want to be. This novel has, it is a national bestseller. What do you think there is about it that, that is striking a chord with people? Well, I can't speak for all readers, that's for sure. <laughs> I only know. What's your hunch? Was, <laughs> I've heard from uh, from a lot of readers. Some people tell me that they've been moved by the the experience of this family, how they hold on to each other no matter what, um, their love for each other, even in protecting one another, in the things that they don't say to one another, and also in that it has maybe um, made some people think about their own connections to their points of origin in new ways. It's not just about who we are in the here and now, but so much of who we are extends far, far, far beyond us, right? We've already learned from scientists the ways that things like trauma are carried in the DNA. For generations and manifest later in generations, there have been so many studies done on the descendants of Holocaust survivors, mm. for example. 
Writing this book also for me was an exploration of how the land and the people that, that made us are carried within us as well. And I, I tried to give a sense of that in the book, and I think that that has impacted some people in, in some ways as well, as I think about their, their own origin stories, their own uh, migratory stories in the past, and how that maybe has impacted who they are now. You had a beautiful phrase a moment ago when you were talking about the geography. One of the questions of the novel is this idea of geography of love. And and that comes through so much in the book that, that there is great love between this family for the ups and downs and through this particular storyteller's view that really it's it's that love that's the glue and there's great concern about the other family members. Uh, There's great appreciation for the other family members. There can be annoyance. There can be all of the things that come with a family. But but at the end, it is it is that that guiding love that really propels them to do what they do. Yeah, absolutely. And very often they don't even know if they're doing the right thing. Right. They're really just doing it guided by their hearts and by their instincts and full of hope. Talia is 15 years old and you can't imagine you know, I mean, I couldn't open, you know, a pudding box when I was 15. I, and, and yet, you know, she's, she's traveling. I and mean, you think to yourself, wow, this is a this is a really smart, amazing kid. And I know there are millions of kids out there like that. Yeah. The funny thing about Talia is that I got the idea for her story or that moment in her story from a headline that I read many, many years ago when I was working on another novel. And there were no details, but the headline was about a group of adolescent girls who had broken out of a similar type of juvenile correctional facility in the mountains of Colombia. And that's all I knew about it. But I, like you, was impressed by these (laughs) um, brave and bold young girls who had the nerve to do that because I also was not like that at 15. And I thought, well, one day I'm going to write about that. And at the same time, I was already thinking about this family story, this portrait of a family in the process of migrating that I was working on. And at a certain point, uh, those two stories came together as I was working on the character of Talia. Patricia Engel's new novel is Infinite Country. It is published by Avid Reader Press. I want to thank you so much for being with us and for sharing with us this week. A great pleasure to have you on the program. Oh, thank you so much. I so enjoyed speaking with you. Patricia Engel's new novel is Infinite Country. We enjoy hearing from our listeners about our shows, and you can email us at book at wamc.org, and you can listen again to this or find past book shows via podcast or at wamc.org. Sir LaDuc produces our program, Bookmark is for next week. And thanks for listening for The Book Show. I'm Joe Donahue.